Hey there everyone, in this video we're going to look at the GarageBand interface and controls so that you can effectively use it as a tool to create the music that you're hearing in your head. So first of all, GarageBand is a multi-track recorder or arranger and what it involves is dealing with audio MIDI information on multiple tracks. Um, when you get a CD or an MP3, your volume control will turn everything up and down because it's all bounced down to one stereo track. In multi-track recording, you can control the level of each individual instrument, meaning if you just want to turn the drums or the bass up without affecting the rest of the instruments and the arrangement, you now have that control. So if I play this right now, So part of me might be thinking that drum beat is slightly too loud. So all I would do is turn that, that drum beat down a bit. The rest of them would stay at the same volume as what they were before. So if we played that again. Great, so that's slightly more balanced. That's the volume control. Moving back along the track, you've also got your pan control. So if you just wanted the drum beat to be in the left side, you'd drag that to the left and so on and so forth. Then you've got this button here. It's called Solo. You'll have noticed all of the surrounding tracks will have gone grey or been deactivated. That means you can just listen to that one individual element. Solo is really useful if, for example, with a piano, you think you heard a wrong chord, but it's hard to pick it out with everything else going, like the bass and the drums. Solo is the fastest way you can block everything else out in the arrangement and hone in on what you need to listen to. Next up you've got the mute control. This performs the exact opposite function of solo and it silences the track. And then moving down to the bottom of the screen, you've got what's called your transport control. Uh, you've got your play button, your stop button. And when you press that it changes function to a control that takes you back to the start of your project. And then you've also got a rewind fast forward style function that helps you progress through your project one bar at a time. So, um, let's say I want to adjust the volume level of my drum beat. Uh, I want it to change kind of dynamically through the piece. If you click on this drop down arrow, it unleashes the automation lane for that track. And the way automation works right now, we're in track volume mode. If I enable it, you're showing a blue line. Now this blue line signifies the volume level in time over over time. So at bar two, that's how loud it is and right now it's the same the whole way through and the way we manipulate this is by creating control points so all you do is you click at the various points on the line that you want to edit and then you you move them so at the start of the project I'm going to move this control point down now I want it to be dead quiet so I've moved it as low as it will go and what will happen is this control point to this control point the computer will basically create uh, a line It'll fill in the blanks. So it works out over eight eight beats, it needs to change the volume at this pace to get to minus 4.3 decibels and it to sound smooth. So if I press play, it's gradually rising in volume. And then here, I want, I want it to go down to 10 dB, minus 10 dB even. That's close enough. And same here as well. And come bar seven, I want it to go back up so I'll just leave that there. All I'm doing is just clicking and dragging these control points and the, the volume will rise and fall following these lines. So if we have a listen to that, it's going to drop in volume when it gets to 5. There you go, so automation, really simple way of automating volume level changes. A playhead is a visual cue that shows you whereabouts you are in your project and which part of your project you're listening to. Right, the ruler. Now just like a ruler in maths, a ruler is used to measure things. Right now, this is measuring the progression of the video in seconds, so 0 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds. Um, say I want to start moving sound effects around to when the car starts to move about. What I want to do first of all is uh, I need a bit more of a detailed view. I can't really see on the ruler exactly where I'm at. So I'm going to enlarge the video window so I've got more of a visual cue. And then I'm going to come down to this zoom control. 
and I'm going to focus in. Now I know where I want to start going. You notice how the thumbnails at the top give you a bit more information too. What I want to do is around this area. So you can see it's just after three seconds by the look of it. Down here on the LCD screen you can see it's three seconds point not five eight of a second and then I want to find my sound effect so that was a bit further along and I'm going to drag that into the correct place and this view enables you to be much more precise when it comes to lining things up with video so if we have a quick look at that good his engine got started at just the right time for music things are slightly different uh, like with this bass guitar track here, uh, I know that I want that to come in on beat one of bar three. And this particular mode we're in is so fluid that I'm going to have to be lining all of the instruments up by eye. It's, it's just going to be really slow. So there's a measures mode you can use for music, which is perfect because you can slide regions straight into the right place really quickly and really precisely. So first, we need to change the kind of measurement we're using which we do by going to this kind of LCD screen down here. If you click on this clock, right now it's in time mode, but I want it to be in measures mode. Measures being bars, beats, and what you'll notice on the ruler now is it's changed to bars and beats. So you've got bar one, and then all of the individual beats inside that, bar two and the individual beats inside that, blah, 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 and beats and measures. Now when I slide this thing around now, you notice it's a bit more jerky. It's snapping, that's what it's called, to the beat and bar lines. It effectively, it forces your music to be in time, which is never a bad thing. Now, when you're arranging music, this will help you massively. If you wonder why your stuff isn't in time, it's probably because you're in time view and not measure mode, all right? So as long as you remember, music measures mode. Sound effects you want in time or slip mode. That about covers all of the basic interface and controls. Remember, you can always recap on this video if things seem a little hazy. Look forward to hearing what you come up with.